Hi again. So this is part two of how we made semi-bin faster. So if you've seen the first video, you'll know that here we're focusing on semi-bin because it's a tool and a, and a tool we hope it will be used by many, many people. And so, so we, I like to do this sort of back of the envelope calculations. And here I'm saying I'm going to plan for success. And I, we hope that semi-bin gets used in thousands of papers. Um, and so if, if it's used in thousands of papers and each one runs it 10 times, that's, that means that means that it's going to be run 10,000 times. So if each of these is one minute faster, that means that each of these of each minute or let's phrase it the other way, each minute that we save and per run um, translates to seven whole days. So the work I'm going to be showing in the end, we managed to squeeze out about 10 minutes worth for each semi bin run. Uh, and so if it gets used 10,000 times, that means that we save about 70 hours of waiting at the computer. So since I spent about four days working on it, I think this was pretty successful. So I'm, we're going to be focusing on the pre-trained mo mode um, where we use a pre-existing model um, and we've, you, know, you can use one of the ones we provide. We provide 10 different habitats and as well as this global model that is probably okay, although not tuned for any spe specific habitat. And there's five steps in, in this. So number one, we compute the abundance feature. So here there's a, a sub step that simply calls bed tools, which is another tool, which we are probably not going to be re-implementing, but what, what we can improve is this post-processing of, of the bed tools output. We compute the camera features. We run the features through the model. We run the graph based clustering, and then we run reclustering. So the number one point is we want to, to measure it. We want to figure out where is time being spent and, and we want to get a feeling of where is it worthwhile to, to invest our resources. And so for that, for that, we, I'm going to now switch over to, to the console, which I've pre-prepared here. And okay. And here, what, what I'm showing is this is a, this is a part of the semi bin code, which I just copied and pasted to a separate file um, and added a bunch of print statements. And I know that this is very, very naive, um, but I kind of like doing it. And I'm going to show you why. Okay, now I am going to start an IPython shell and I am going to run this script, um, which as I said, this was just a copy and paste from the main code with all of these print statements. Um, and one of the things I like is that I'm going to be able to see it go by live um, and it's going to take a few minutes, but, but, but that will give me a little bit of time to, to get a, to see what's happening. Okay. So it's loading. Um, I can also in parallel look at this top, which gives me, you know, here's our process running. Um, it's using about two G of, memory, you know, and I can see, okay, the loading took a little bit, but not so much. Um, and now this, the K neighbors graph building the graph. Well, that seems to be taking a lot, a lot more. Um, and so in some, in some sense here, the fact that it's a little bit boring, um, is what, is what I'm going for here. It, it lets you get this very intuitive feeling of, okay, this is, this, this is taking a long time. Why? Why does this step take so long? And if I wait just a little bit longer, then, then it will eventually in here, I'm kind of cheating because I'm showing you the results already. It will show me that, okay, a lot of time was spent in this step. So this is obviously the first step is everything, um, everything. And then doing, doing the actual info map took a long time and then our partition and then calc. KL also took a long time. And actually going going back to the live results. So here's doing this KL thing for now. And I, you can also see that if I switch now to the here, it's when memory starts really going up. Um, it's while it's doing this KL, which is Kubak Libler divergence. And so, and so by running it manually, by, by 
forcing myself to wait for it, I develop a develop a good intuition of you know what's what's taking time, what's going on, and eventually, eventually I I oh, let me just go back to here. Eventually here I am going to just show you the easiest thing we did. Um, oh, so this is what I said we're doing, and what. One of the conclusions is that the actual machine learning took about three minutes. The actual machine learning, you know, was just doing, doing the, you know, doing the modeling. You know, you, you barely even saw it. You know, after the models were loaded, like doing the embedding was very quick, and then doing the info map is also going to take a few minutes. But then all of this building the graphs, this is where a lot, doing this callback lab, it's where a lot of time was spent. And so what supposedly the hard computation is actually not where time is spent and what, and it's massaging the inputs um, that takes a lot of time. And this might seem counterintuitive, but the fact is we, you know, we're using these very optimized libraries for, for the neural networks. We're using PyTorch in this case, and you know, there's been thousands and thousands of man hours spent improving the efficiency. Whereas for our code, you know, we're, we're improving it right now for the first time. So I'm just going to show you here the very first optimization that we did, uh, which is, okay, we realize that, yes, this takes a lot of memory. So the easiest thing you can do is instead of using floating point numbers with 64 bits, let's use floating point numbers with 32 bits. Um, and the truth is these are, you know, these are uh, feature abundances. So these are just camera abundances and we simply do not have enough um, enough precision in our measurements to, to to be worthwhile using the full thing. So we are so this was the first thing we did, and I'm going to stop here because we're going to I want to keep this each individual video short. But this but this already cut the memory usage in half with the most simple thing. So you know, like and subscribe below for the next videos. Um, which I promise will be a bit faster than the gap between the previous one and today's video. Thank you.